I've been playing Wandering Sword because you have no time to gain. Welcome to the next When the Credits Roll review, a series in which I only review a game once the credits have rolled, so you can, so you can have some faith that I may know what I'm talking about, sort of. So first up, some basic details about Wandering Sword. It was released the 15th of September 2023 for PC and was developed by the Swordsman Studio and published by Spiral Up Games, and it took me just under 40 hours to complete. So. What is Wandering Sword all about? Well, in China, there is a genre of stories, films, and more that are called Wushu. What this is, is a genre based around martial arts, usually set in ancient China, where a hero usually rises from nothing, utilizing powerful martial arts to stand up for good and destroy all the evil in the world. There's usually a hint of fantasy to the abilities, as in they almost seem to wield magical powers, but it's almost based in reality. So kind of low fantasy as opposed to high fantasy. So there is actually a kind of like high fantasy genre called Jian Jia. So I, I apologize for my pronunciation of any of these words. I'm trying to learn Chinese, but I'm not very good at the pronunciation yet. I will put the words <laughs> so you can read them. Um, Wandering Sword takes this idea of Wushu where with our erstwhile hero being Yun Wen Yi, a young guy with a dream of becoming a martial arts master. But while doing an escort mission, his group fall prey to a battle between two forces, and all his friends get killed, and Yi is badly poisoned. But fortunately for Yi, a master that they were escorting saves him, and sends him to a friend who is able to help with the poison. And by a strange stroke of fortune, Yi has to become a proper martial artist in this world to subdue and eradicate the poison. And from this, it's a twisted tale of righteous sex versus evil gangs and more. It starts sending Yi around the world, getting embroiled in all sorts of misadventures while growing friendships in love with many people. There is a lot going on in this story with a lot of side tales that all help build out an interesting world. And it's a tale we don't see very often in the West. How does it play? As usual, let's have a quick look outside the combat first. Well, this is a very traditional ex exploration with a large world map that unlocks as you progress through the game with lots of towns and dungeons to explore and people to talk to. But what is unique about Wandering Swords is for many, char for many characters, you don't just talk to them, but you can build a relationship with them by either completing side quests, gifting them items that they like, Rare items make them like me more, of course. And once your relationship develops to a certain point, you can spar with them. On winning, you actually get some of their items because most of the characters have a small selection of items of their own. Um, even gifted items are up for grabs. Um, but some people have the option to consult and using this, you'll gain new abilities so they can actually teach you martial arts. So these people are more worth investing in than a lot of the others. So there is a lot going on, a lot of items to get, a lot of skills to learn, and a lot of side quests to take part in. Some are simple fetch quests and others which can lead to longer subplots that can even end with you getting new buddies for your team. So progression characters is quite interesting in this game as it doesn't use levels. Firstly, we have a very simple weapon system with Yi being able to use any weapon and his buddies only being able to use specific weapon of their choice. So this could be a sword, a saber, pole, um, hidden weapon or fists. And like the, the weapons all have their own unique set of skills that can be learned and they all act in a different way to each other. And you can also equip a couple of bits of armor that usually just buff, buff your health and MP and like a couple of accessories that buff other stats. But like I said, as we don't have levels, so how do we get stronger? Well, as you defeat enemies, or from some books, you gain martial points. These can be spent on every skill you learned. Skills are gained from finding other books that your entire team can share, if they can use that specific weapon. Cultivation and likeness techniques can be taught to everyone. Or they're gained from story quests, which usually only Yi gets. 
or from consulting, as I mentioned earlier, which again, only ye learns, not everyone else in the team. Each skill can be raised to level 10, and usually at level five and such, they unlock extra effects for that skill. So you tend to want to get every skill to level 10. And not only does that make the skill stronger, but if it's like an attack, it makes your strength of using that weapon stronger. So it'll, if you've raised a sword skill to level 10, you'll tend to now hit harder with swords in general. If it's a lightness skill, it can make you faster. If it's a cultivation skill, it grants you meridian points. Meridians being the next way of getting stronger for each character. So each character have several meridian points, of which there are multiple levels in kind of like a branching tree. And you spend your meridian points to unlock each meridian point on the specific meridian point chart. Um, as you, it takes three knocks to fully unlock it. And that lets you then go to the next point in that tree. And these can be things like a, one of the trees is focused on strength. One of the trees is focused on HP and all sorts. Like most of the stats are there. You just have to find the right tree to progress. So like I said, this way of progression is a bit double-edged as it can feel like you're not progressing. And then all of a sudden you explode with strength. So if you've been farming martial points and then you buff a load of cultivation skills, you haven't leveled up yet and suddenly have a load of meridian points. You spend them all at once and suddenly you've gone from like plus five attack to plus 50 attack and you hit like a truck now compared to what you were before and it's also because everything's so heavily tied to finding skills you're forced to use the relationship system as you have to go around making friends with all the various sects and sect members and leaders to get all the skills from them and doing side quests to find those other hidden martial skills and such because gaining skills means you get stronger this all leads into a battle system which is a simplified turn-based tactics game as in the map is only one size and has no obstacles or multiple levels it's just a flat battle screen but this doesn't mean it's super simple as surprisingly as there's a surprising amount of ways they position the characters in the battle and in some cases, the sheer number of allies and enemies in a battle can make it quite a complicated fight. So we have a choice here, and that's to do it as a real-time version or a turn-based version. And these can be switched at any time. Personally, though, I never tried the real-time battle. I just used turn-based because that's how I like to play games. So the turns follow an active time system um, reminiscent of like Final Fantasy's ATB system. Basically, you have a bar that fills up before you can use your next skill. And the higher your speed stats, the faster that fills up. On your turn, you get to choose what level of skill you want to use, with skills having several levels. Um, there are four levels of combat skills, and they each have like a cooldown before you can use them again. You also have lightness skills that usually affect how far you can move and cultivation skills that tend to give you like a buff or a healing skill. Cultivation skills are the only place where there is healing, apart from the very rare attack skill that also heals your allies. Battles overall tend to be quite quick and brutal. And for, and for the less important battles, such as when you're trying to grind martial points and such, there's even an auto battle feature and a speed up feature, which is nice to have. It makes it that bit quicker. Overall, I think it's a system that you can make it as simple or complex as you want, which is personally a good choice as it makes more available, makes it available to more people. So anyway, what is actually good about the game? Firstly, it's absolutely gorgeous pixel artwork throughout. Visually, it's just fantastic in motion. Add on to that a really compelling story with a large number of world building side content that gives you many hours of entertainment. I also really enjoyed the battle system. For its simplicity, it's surprisingly flexible, with surprisingly large battles being able to play out using it. And giving people items to make them your friend and then robbing them blind is never not fun. But all games have their negatives, and in this case, it would be the stamina system. Which I didn't mention above, it's basically a system 
that if you collect items from gathering spots, spar with your friends, or fish, they all take stamina. And you gain it back by either using items or resting it in. The end. It's just a system that feels out of place in a full release game. It feels like something more that you'd find in like a mobile game. And it's so easily cheesed by basically staying near one of the free resting spots. It makes it pointless. Like when you're trying to consult, consulting is another area that costs stamina. So if you want to learn a skill, it's usually like 60 stamina points. And at the start of the game, you only have a hundred. So you'd have to, you could only consult once and you'd have to rest. So you'd get all your buddies together that you want to learn the skills from, sit near a resting point that's free as opposed to an inn, and just learn a skill, rest, learn a skill. It's pointless. But before my final thoughts, what did the critics think? Well, it appears to have a 78 from critics with an 8.0 or 80 from users, which I personally feel is a little bit low, but there are not many critic reviews only having six so far at the time of the recording of this. It is a game that does feel like it's been overlooked, sadly. Overall, you can probably tell I absolutely love the game. The mix between tactical combat and exploration just hit me in all the right places and add on a fun story, fantastic visuals, and it's a game deserving of far more recognition than it's receiving at the moment. So my final rating is must play. <laughs>